getting paper on his player haters old news money on the other line so I'm ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another edition of i'm not gonna hold you man as usual I'm your host Scott. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barb Chef Scott. You can follow HMB Media at HMB Media on Instagram and on Twitter. You can follow them at HMB Media TV. And of course, follow the brand, the Barber's Chair Network at Barber's Chair Net on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chair Network, man. This is episode nine. Um, we've got a lot to get into today, man. This is the official. NFL season preview, man. When we are recording this, it is now September. We are here. It's the glorious month of September. The football is real. Training camp is over. Preseason is over. And we can finally get down to the nitty gritty, man. I'm going to break down every division, every conference. I'm going to give y'all who I think will be represented in this year's Super Bowl, Super Bowl 56, which will be held at SoFi Stadium out here in Los Angeles, California in February 2022. Man, I'm going to let you know about that. And I'm going to break down who my top 10 players are going into this 2021 season, man. But before we get into that, let's get into our oh, actually before we get into the sound. I have two announcements to make uh, starting next week on this show. We will have the 79th and Hallis Corner. My brother Flows will be joining me every week where he will be giving us an update on what's going on going down at Hallis Hall leading up into each upcoming Bears game. So if you're a fan of the 79th and Hallis podcast, if you're a Bears fan, look forward for that. And for my gambling people out there, I will have I'm not I'm not gonna hold you gambling. A uh, correspondent who will be joining us weekly to let you know what the sure bets are, what games you stay away from each and every week. So look out for uh, look out for that. But let's get into it. Start off with our sound off, man. Uh, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is done. I came on here on this show last week and I told y'all that Cam Newton was playing with fire, man, by not taking that shot, not taking the vaccine shot. Because uh, NFL teams are going to be looking for that when it comes to cutting people. Now, I didn't think he was going to get cut. I thought he just was going to lose a starting job. But as uh, Sunday night started to roll around, I started to feel like eh, it might be kind of curtains from Cam. Coming from the stuff we was hearing in the national media from different uh, people in the New England media about, you know, him really favoring Matt Jones. And I didn't think Matt Jones had a lights out preseason. I mean, he was pretty good. I mean, it was definitely better than what I expected. I didn't really have high expectations for him coming into this preseason, but he had a solid one. But I felt like Cam did enough to prove that he should be the starting quarterback and let Mac Jones sit on the bench until he was ready. But when you, you know, with these new COVID protocols that you got out here in the NFL, it's a very, very uh, no tolerance type of policy, man. And Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots came down and they pretty much, you know, made the decision that Cam Newton will be cut. Uh, Cam Newton came out and said that there's not 32 uh, uh, quarterbacks better than him. I actually agree with that. I want to say Cam is not MVP Cam. Cam is not what he used to be, but Cam can step, definitely still be a starting quarterback in this league. But it really just comes down to making the right decision when it comes down to the COVID thing. And if you need to, you know, save your career, which he's potentially doing right now, you need to go out there and make that shot and take that shot, especially if you're a quarterback and you're the de facto leader of your team. That's just not a good message to send, man. So, but on the other side, man, Mac Jones, this is your time. The Mac Jones era has begun. Now, pay attention to the play. Pay attention to the play. Everybody, they're going to be painting this as he's the next Tom Brady. Since he's the great white quarterback playing in New England, he's behind Belichick. What's Hoodie's next invention? You're going to see them really, really gas up this kid, especially around week five, I think it is, when Brady ultimately makes his return to Fox World and will be taking on his former team on Sunday Night Football, which is definitely going to be a key matchup. Uh, I think he's going to be – I think he can be good. I think he's in the best possible situation outside of Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance is in the best situation, obviously, with uh, the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan and that system they got over there. But he's probably in the second best situation. I mean, where else would you rather be as a rookie quarterback than a team that's run the NFL the last two decades and arguably the greatest coach of all time in Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick wouldn't just make this move if he didn't have any confidence in uh, Matt Jones. As we saw he did 20 years ago when um, Drew Bledsoe got hurt. And um, he brought in Tom Brady. And then when Drew Bledsoe was ready to come out there and play, he still stuck with the kid, which obviously <laughs> – Prove it to be one of the best decisions in the history of the sport. And this will be the first time that the uh, New England Patriots start a number two, number one overall draft pick since 
Drew Bledsoe. So that's going to be something to watch out for. I definitely think it's going to be exciting. As a Bears fan, it's kind of annoying because you see all these young quarterbacks going to be out there and they're taking the training wheels off. Matt Jones is going to start. Zach Wilson is going to start. Trevor Lawrence is going to start. And Justin Fields is sitting there on the bench because of a promise they made to Andy Dalton. But this is not 79th and Hallis, and I will not rent on that again. <laughs> so uh, tune in for that more. Uh, if you want to check out our bear season preview, man, the 79th and Hallis season preview is out right now. I give my record prediction. Uh, let's just say it's not nice for what I got there. So check that out right now. But let's get into the first topic of the day, man. NFL Top 100 has come out. And the, the uh, players have spoken. The players have Patrick Mahomes, the number one uh, player in the NFL, man. And one thing about the NFL Top 100, it's really just a popularity contest. It's really just about who the players fuck with. Because if you look at the list, uh, Roquan Smith should be on that list. There's not 100 players in the NFL better than Roquan Smith. There's a couple players on there that was a little higher than they need to be. I love Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is not, number, not a 25 player in the league currently. <laughs> so it's really just about reputation and who the players like. So my list, it's not that much different from the NFL Top 100, but we're going to get into it, what this list is, man. Let's start uh, right away with my number 10 player, man. My number 10 player is going to be the L.A. Rams. Jalen Ramsey, man, uh, to me, is the best corner in the league. There's not a lot of quote-unquote shutdown corners in the NFL right now, but Jalen Ramsey is definitely it. Jalen Ramsey did a really, really good job in the playoffs with guard Devontae Adams, even though the Packers won that game. He pretty much took Devontae out the game. And that's one thing that you got to love from Jalen is Jalen talks a lot of shit, but he backs it up. And I think that he's well-deserving. If you look at the top 10, it really comes down to who's the best at that particular position. I know you got a lot of uh, quarterbacks who be in there. But I will go with Jalen, number one. Jalen, by far, to me, is worth the money that he's getting, and I think he's by far a shutdown corner. And number nine, I'm going to go with, this is kind of blasphemous, but the Green Bay Packers, Devontae Adams. I feel nasty when I give Devontae. Devontae's my favorite wide receiver in the league, and I know as a Bears fan, this is like sacrilegious to give anybody on that roster any credit, but Devontae is awesome. I think Devontae is the best route runner in the league. He's the best possession catcher in the league. And he's just like, he's just incredible. I know a lot of people like, what what would he be without Aaron Rodgers? But I think he helps Aaron Rodgers out just as much as, you know, it's the other way around, man. You got to look at him. Last year, he had a phenomenal year. You know, he's a, he's a instant touchdown threat, man. He's definitely what you would call a possession wide receiver, man. So I think he's definitely um, worthy of being the number nine pit, uh, player in the NFL. And number eight, man, I'm going to go with the best wide receiver in the league, DeAndre Hopkins, a.k.a. Nuke. Uh, what he's been doing there. Now, of course, he had a so-so year last year with the uh, Arizona Cardinals his first year with Kyler Murray. Now, granted, it wasn't in training camp. He didn't really have that much time to be with the team due to COVID and things of that nature. But look at what he's done in his career period. I mean, he was playing with a lot of bum-ass quarterbacks before he finally got inmate number four in Houston. <laughs> uh, he's playing with guys like Tom Savage, and he's putting out crazy-ass numbers. And I think, you know, if there's any guy that, you know, if my life was on the line, I needed one wide receiver. I'm definitely taking DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, the Hail Mary he called last year was, was, was fucking filthy, man. So I think uh, DeAndre, even though I think Devontae is on his heels, I don't think it's that big of a gap between the two. I think maybe in a year or two from now, we could be having a different conversation. But as of right now, Nuke will be the best wide receiver in the NFL, and that's why I've got him number eight on my list. Number seven, Danger Russ, Russell Wilson. In my opinion, he's the greatest black quarterback of all time, man. He's awesome. Every year he gives you 30 touchdowns, doesn't give you a lot of interceptions. Um, He's been playing with a shit O-line for a great amount of time. You just look at the standard of excellence, man. He's got Seattle in the playoff conversation every fucking year. And he's done a lot of a lot of things with before, even before he got DK Metcalf. He was doing it with a lot of wide receivers who you wouldn't quote unquote consider stars. You know what I'm saying? So you got to give it to Russ. Russ, I think, is on tap for another, another phenomenal year. We'll get into what I think the Rams will not the Rams, but the Seahawks will do later on in this show, man. But at number seven, gonna go with my man Russell Wilson. At number six, we're going with the GOAT, Thomas Brady. The fact that he's still on this list at age what? A hundred. I don't even know how fucking old he is this time. He's the only guy who in his 40s looks younger than he did when he was in his fucking 20s, man. But what he's been doing has been incredible. I think he's going to have another crazy year. Uh, He went out there, got a seventh Super Bowl championship this year. And I think he's got a great, great chance to repeat this year, man. And and I don't you know you. Why why would you say why you got the goat and he's not in the top five? The fact he's even on this list as his age is crazy, man. So I'm going to go with number six. 
with the GOAT, Tom Brady, man. And number five, we get into our top five. To me, it's the best pass catcher in the NFL, Travis Kelsey. Uh, you know, we're not going to separate this between tight ends and wide receivers. He's the best pass catcher in the NFL, man. He's been doing it for a, a great amount of years now at this point. You got to give it to the kid. He's really going to be able to put himself in a conversation if he keeps this up with the Rob Gronkowski's, with the uh, Tony Gonzalez, as far as getting into that GOAT tight end uh, discussion. And you know with Patrick Mahomes, he's going to put up numbers each and every year. So number five, going to go with Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey. Now number four, we got to go with that man, Derrick Henry, man. I think the Tennessee Titans are going to be great this year. They're going to got them a little great offense with uh, him, Julio, uh, Tanner Goat. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to that. And he has a chance to be the first player to have back-to-back 2,000 yard rushing seasons. I think he's got a real, real great chance of that, and I'm eager to see that man. So I'm gonna go with Derrick Henry as number four, and then we get into our number three. I'm gonna go with a guy who there's not a player in sports who has caused me more pain in my life than this guy here. Number three will be the reigning MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Um, this might potentially be his last year in Green Bay. I hope to God it is because I'm tired. I want the torture to end. Like you've been torturing me for as long as I can fucking remember, and, and I'm tired of it. Like stop. Like, but I can acknowledge that he's a phenomenal fucking player. And I think he's going to be out there and he's going to be in the MVP race and he's going to have the Green Bay Packers right in the Super Bowl conversation, man. So at number three, I will go with Aaron Rodgers. Number two, man, that man, the best defensive player in the league, Aaron fucking Donald. I mean, at this point, there's really nothing to say about it. This guy puts legit fear in the, in, in the hearts of offensive lines. Where he puts fear in my head. head. I, I'm, I'm scared as fuck. Actually, I'm not scared because I actually hope he takes Andy Dalton now. I don't, I don't want anybody to get hurt. This is, this is clear. You know, just you know, do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Just, just do what you got to do. I was like, see, Justin Fields a little earlier. But Aaron Donald is fucking amazing. For this guy to have 20 sacks or in the 20 sacks conversation as a DN, I mean, it's a D tackle is fucking insane. And he could easily be the number one player each and every year like he was two years ago on the NFL Top 100, man. But the only reason he's not number one is because the consensus number one is that man, Patrick fucking Mahomes, the baby goat, as I like to call him, man. He is out here every year. And last year, he only had 30 touchdowns. People looked at it like, oh, it's a, it a down year. That's just how high the bar is for Pat at this particular moment, man. I know he's going to be going out there looking for, for revenge. You know what I'm saying? Last year did not end the way he wanted to. They, they got packed out in the Super Bowl. Let's just keep it all the way funky. They got their ass kicked. So I know he's going to be out there trying to have a lot of things to prove. And I still, you know, I think Justin Fields would be great. I think he'd be a great quarterback. But Patrick Mahomes is generational, man. He's generational. And, you know, I, 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 I still wake up in cold sweats so that he's not on my football team. Man. But Pat is awesome. He's got a chance to be the GOAT one day, but he is definitely the greatest player in the NFL right now. So those are my top 10 players of 2021 heading into this season, man. Now let's get into our breakdown, man. I'm going to break down each division. Now, of course, for you who don't know, last year was the first year of expanded playoffs. It will be the same this year. 14 teams will be making the postseason, seven in the NFC, seven in the AFC, and that includes the four division winners and three wild cards. Now, I won't be naming number of wins because that's just like a lot, and I'm not going to be looking at all these motherfucking schedules. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. But I will be naming who my division winners be will be, who will be the wild cards, and also who will represent each conference in the Super Bowl. So let's get into it, man, with the NFC least, as I like to call it. So a lot of teams there, man, is, is the Washington football team, the Dallas Cowboys. You know, it's, it's always a real competition. It's one of my favorite divisions in base, I mean, in football because you never really know what's going to happen. It is the most mediocre but entertaining division. The shit talking between the fan bases is crazy. So my winner for the NFC least in 2021 will be the Washington football team. Now, I debated back and forth about – them and the Dallas Cowboys. And the only reason I'm not going with the Cowboys this year is, like I said a couple weeks ago on this show, I don't trust that Dak Prescott's injury is minor. Uh, it's looking like he's not going to start week one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I think it's going to be a game-time decision, but I would not be shocked if he missed a couple a couple weeks. And then last year, you got to look at last year, Dak in like the first month was putting up crazy numbers. And they lucky as hell that they even won a game in that first month. That defense is very suspect. Outside, like Demarcus uh, Lawrence, 
uh, you know, um, I don't really know what how much you can expect from them. You know, maybe Micah Parsons might be a breakout rookie, but there's too many question marks for me to fully go with Dallas as my number one. Washington, man, they got a great fucking defense. Chase Young, I mean that that dude is is he's, he's scary, man. They got a great defense. Um, I really like what Riverboat Ron is bringing to the table with that team, and they've got Fitz Magic this year. Now we all know how Fitz Magic is. He looks like an MVP for the first six weeks of the season, and then he you know kind of comes down to earth. But in this division, where seven to eight wins can definitely win a division, I think it will be enough, and I think they will represent the NFC East in this year's playoffs. And let's just see how the rest of the division I think play out. I think the Dallas Cowboys have finished number two, a close number two. Number three, I got the New York football giants. I mean, there's really not too much to say about them. I think defense will be better than people expect. Um, We're going to have Saquon back, but Daniel Jones is not good. My Giants fans, listen to me, man. Listen to me, man. I, I, especially my guy Mariano. He's, he's a diehard Giants fan. As somebody who knows about mediocre quarterbacks, as somebody who knew a project at a basketball school, which is what Daniel Jones is. He went to do. He's not it, man. It's, it's just, he's just not it. And eventually you're going to have to come to grips with that. I appreciate y'all for passing on Justin Fields so to, so we could go and get him, but I'm not expecting them. And to finish dead last in this division, I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles, man. I don't really even know what the hell is going on. Obviously, they ain't got no faith in uh, Jalen Hurts because they traded for Gardner Minshew, who's another mid-quarterback. And it's just way too many question marks, man. I, I'm not expecting shit from that team. I think it's going to be a very, very, very rough season for the Eagles. And if you're a Philadelphia sports fan, you just better hope that the Ben Simmons package is enough for y'all because the Phillies ain't making the playoffs and the Eagles ain't making it either, man. <laughs> so let's go on to the NFC West, which I think is the best division in football. And I think the winner of this division will be the San Francisco 49ers. Last year, they took a huge step back because of all the in in injuries they had to Jimmy Garoppolo, to Nick Bosa, and there was a whole bunch of other guys they lost on the offensive line too. And I even think George Kittle got injured at the end. They're coming back. They're going to be healthy. They got Jimmy G. And if Jimmy G gets hurt, they got Trey Lance waiting in the rent wings. And I just feel like they're going to really, really come in and take advantage and, and step up and uh, win this division. And I think this is going to be the most competitive division in football. I think all four of these teams can win 10 games, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers, number one. I got the Los Angeles Rams coming in, number two. I got the Seattle Seahawks coming in, number three. And I got the Arizona Cardinals coming in last. Now, you will see later on when I make my wild card picks why I think this is the strongest division. Um, Going next to the landslide division, the NFC South. Last year, the Defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers were a wild card because you still had Drew Brees uh, in in New Orleans. They won that division and they and they they lambasted the Buccaneers in the two games they played. Now, of course, now you know the difference between the regular season and the playoffs. That shit did not carry come January when they got the ass beat by the Buccaneers in the Superdome, man. And by the way, thoughts and prayers out to everybody out there in New Orleans, man. I uh, hope everybody stays safe. With this hurricane, the Saints will not be playing their first five four games in New Orleans. They're actually gonna be playing the opener against the Green Bay Packers in Jacksonville, man. So, but I've got Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning this division with ease. I mean, there's not really any threats in this division. I mean, look at the quarterbacks. You got Jameis, you got Matt Ryan, and you got Sam Darnold. I think this is gonna be a breeze. I think the Buccaneers got into a real groove at the end of the season last year, and I think it's just gonna carry. They brought the entire team back, they've actually got a full training camp. With everybody, I think the Buccaneers are going to be nasty. I think the New Orleans Saints will come in second. I think that defense is really, really, really good. I think Jameis can be okay. The thing about Jameis is you live and you die by the Jameis. He can go out there and give you 30 to 40 touchdowns, but you know you're going to throw 30 to 40 picks also. So it's, it's going to be a big toss-up for them. But I think it'll be enough to finish second. Uh, then I got the Atlanta Falcons finishing in third. I mean, there's really not much to say about that team. Uh, they, You know, Matt Ryan's in his last days. They drafted the tight end as the number one pick. Not really much there. And then I got the Carolina Panthers finishing dead last. Dead last. Yes, they will get Christian McCaffrey back this year. It'll be a little bit of a spark to their offense. But as we all know, what we've seen from Sam Donald, that dude is trash. <laughs> There's really not much there about that. Then we're going to go to the beloved, the NFC North. The NFC North, the black and blue division of football. 
I think it's going to be a clean sweep for the Green Bay Packers. I think they'll win this division with ease. Uh, this is a very, very, very mediocre division. Um, I don't think it will be remotely close. And I think it's just something that, you know, now for the Green Bay Packers is can you do it in the playoffs? In the last two years, they've lost in the NFC Championship game. And with potentially this being Aaron Rodgers last season, there is a lot of pressure in that building. Not only Aaron Rodgers, it might be Devontae Adams last season, too, as he's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. So a lot of pressure for Green Bay, but there will not be any pressure for them when it comes to winning this damn division. Number two, I got the beloved, the Chicago Bears, uh, finishing second. Um, I think this is going to be the only exciting thing. If you're a Bears fan to watch for this season will be Justin Fields. Eventually he will play uh, unless Andy Dalton has a career year that we've never seen before. Justin Fields will, will be starting before Halloween. So that's the only thing. The defense, I mean, Danny Trevathan is going to be starting the year on the partially uh, you know, injured list, whatever the fuck that is. This secondary is very, very, very questionable. There's no Kyle Fuller. Uh, they cut Desmond Trufant. So it's really going to be Eddie Jackson, Jalen Johnson, and some rooks. So fucking pray. And the, defense, the defensive line is a lot of pressure on these dudes, man. They're healthy for the first time in a couple of years. Khalil Mack, Akeem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, Bilal Nichols, they've got to get to the quarterback to make the job as easy as possible for the secondary. But I'm just going to give you all my record for them. I got them going to 9-8 and eight and missing the playoffs now. Nine is their ceiling. I could see this being a 6-7 win team easily. But over the last couple of years, they've had the worst quarterback room in football. And as much as I'm not respect, expecting anything from Andy Dalton, he's better than Nick Foles and Mr. Trubisky. So I think they can squeeze out nine wins, but they will miss the uh, NFL playoffs. Man. And then coming in third will be the Minnesota anti-vaxxers, uh, <laughs> which is Kirk Cousin and those guys. Not really much said about that team besides they're better than the Detroit Lions. That's really all I got. And, of course, finishing fourth, as they always do, it's the fucking Detroit Lions. There's a lot of Lions fans out there that talk a lot of shit for no damn reason. Like, you would jump off a fucking building to have the success that the Bears had over the last decade. And guess what? Breaking news, the Bears have not had any success over the last decade. And that pretty much tells you everything it needs to do when it comes to the Detroit Lions. You shipped out Matthew Stafford, who is a good at best quarterback for Jared fucking Goff. Jared Goff was bad in L.A., and now he ain't got Daddy McVay whispering in his ear. ear so good fucking luck. You will stay in the projects. The Detroit Lions will be finishing dead last in the NFC North. Now. Time for my three NFC wild cards, man. Now, what goes back to what I was saying a couple minutes ago about the NFC West being the best division in football. I think all four teams in the NFC West will make the playoffs. My fifth seed, I've got the Los Angeles Rams. The thing about Matthew Stafford, I see a lot of people got them as a Super Bowl contender. And I think the defense is elite. I think Sean McVay is an elite play caller. They've got a lot of great offensive weapons. But as somebody who's watched Matthew Stafford over the last decade, and he had the greatest offensive weapon that you could possibly have in Megatron. The funny thing about Matthew Stafford is he's not as bad as people make him out to be, and he damn sure isn't as good as what people make him out to be. He is the epitome of an average fucking quarterback and if you're expecting to win a Super Bowl with that guy I think you're going to be disappointed but I do think it'll be enough to make the playoffs and I think they'll be the fifth seed sixth seed I've got Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks and seventh seed I've got the Arizona Cardinals Kyler Murray uh um DeAndre Hopkins uh they got AJ Green this year that would be enough to get them so I think all three of those wild card teams will be going to the NFC West now we move on to the AFC, man. AFC East, which used to be the division owned by the New England Patriots up until last year. We are now in the Buffalo Bills era, and I have the Bills going back to back as AFC East champions. Y'all all know how I feel about If you listen to the Two Minutes Real podcast, you know how I feel about Josh Allen. Not the biggest Josh Allen fan, but he had a great season last year. And I think the potential was there for them to have another great season. And I think they will win this division with particular ease. Number two, I got the New England Pagers. And I was going back and forth between the Pagers and the Dolphins about who will finish number two. And I think the Dolphins could probably have a better roster, but there's too many question marks as far as that quarterback situation. Now, there's quarterback questions with Matt Jones, but I trust Bill Belichick 
more than I trust any uh, coach in the NFL. And I think that's a deciding factor. You know, Bill Belichick defenses will always be good, even though Stephon Gilmore is going to miss the first six games of the season. But I think it will be enough to edge Miami. And by the way, we don't even know what's going to happen with Miami's quarterback situation. There are talks for Deshaun Watson, which is fucking crazy to me because until you know what his situation is going to be legally, I'm not giving the Texans any assets for him. Like, that's kind of stupid to me. So I don't really know what's going on with that. So I got the uh, New England Patriots finishing uh, second in that division. Dolphins will finish third. And, of course, the Jets finish dead last. I mean, but at least if you're a Jets fan, there will be something to watch. First-year head coach Robert Salah and, of course, Zach Wilson will be starting from week one. So there'll be things to watch if you're a Jets fan, but they won't be better than the other, other three teams in that division. Now we go to the AFC South, which is a terrible fucking division. I think the Tennessee Titans will win that one with, with ease. I got the Colts finishing number two. We don't know when Carson Wentz is going to play. He's going to miss week one because of the ease in COVID protocol right now. But even when he gets back, he's been hot ass for the last couple of years. I don't really know which more they expect from him. He's going to be back with Frank Wright, who was a guy who, you know, had him that MVP season in 2017, which we all know he'd have been MVP if he didn't tear his ACL against the, uh, the Rams in that season. That they eventually won a Super Bowl. But there's not really too much to finish see from them. Number three, I got the Jaguars will finish number three. They got uh, Trevor Lawrence, Urban Myers first year. They're going to be a bad football team, but they will definitely be better than the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans might be the most run, worst run franchise in all of football. Top tier worst franchise in all of sports. And Deshaun uh, Watson will not be on the active roster to begin the season. Of course, we all know he's in limbo with those uh, – charges, allegations, whatever you want to call it. So they're going to finish their last. Now we go to another black and blue division, the AFC North. Cleveland Browns, man. Cleveland Browns will win this division. Um, a lot of pressure on the Browns this year. Had a great season last year. Made the playoffs for the first time in fucking forever. Um, they had a shot there to knock off the Chiefs, man. They had a shot. Didn't quite get it done. But, you know, another year for Baker Mayfield. Odell Beckham will be back. Uh, healthy uh, Stefanski being in his second season as the head coach. I expect that running game to be elite once again. Of course, you got that grown ass man, Miles Garrett, anchoring that defense. And I do think it will be enough to win that division. Coming in second will be the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, they still didn't get that man any more receivers. Now, there's a lot of people who listen to the two minute drill uh, podcast who think I hate black quarterbacks because I don't think Lamar Jackson can throw. And I think that is an egregious allegation. I love black quarterbacks. I have a black quarterback. I just don't think the dude can throw. And there's nothing you could do to prove to me that he can't. Okay? So that's just pretty much where I'm at with it. I don't give a damn. Oh, he ain't got no receivers. He got enough receivers for me to, to actually see what an accurate fucking pass is. And he ain't got it. But I'm going to have him finish in number two in this division. Number three, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It will, hopefully, it will be the final uh, – season for that criminal who wears number seven in Pittsburgh. Uh, I do think it will be enough strictly because even though he should be rotting under a fucking jail, I think he still will be good enough to lead this team to a playoff spot. And just my favorite coach in the league, Mike Tomlin, they have never had a losing season in his, what, 16 years since he's been the coach of this franchise. And you got to give a shout out to Mike Tomlin, man. He's being coached this Steelers and he is, Killing it on Raising Canaan right now on Stars. You got to give a shout out to Mike Tomlin. And then finishing dead last will be the Cincinnati Bengals, but they will be watchable. My man Joey B, Joe Burrow, will be back from his ACL tear. Um, looking forward to seeing him playing again. Hopefully, Matt Nagy gets a brain by week two, and he gives the people what we want to see. Home opener, week two. Give us Justin Fields versus Joey Burrow. That's what the streets want to see. Give us that. So I got them finishing dead last in the NFC, AFC North, but they will be entertaining. The AFC West, before we get there, obviously, you know, because I picked the Chargers to be the fifth seed. Uh, AFC West, we can see the Chiefs win that division. Um, as I was saying about the Chargers, they can make it a little hot in the kitchen for the Chiefs. They can make it a little hot in the kitchen. Like they can have some games where they can put a little bit of fear in them, but ultimately the Chiefs, will come out unscathed. The Chiefs win that division. The Chargers will come in second. The Raiders will come in third. 
I think it's very fucking hilarious that the Raiders tried to trade for Khalil Mack again. By the way, as we're recording this is September 1st, happy Khalil Mack Day, Chicago Bears fans. There's not much we have, so celebrate this. Happy Khalil Mack Day. And then fourth finishing dead last with Denver fucking Broncos. I mean, hey, man, sh shout out to Teddy Bridgewater, but it's not moving the needle, my brother. They'll finish dead last. So back to my wild cards, as I was saying. The Chargers will finish in the fifth seed. As a sixth seed, man, I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. I think they will do enough. That defense will do enough to get them in the playoffs. And I also think that that criminal in Pittsburgh will lead the Steelers to the seventh seed. So those are my NFC and AFC playoff teams. Now, Championship Sunday, which is low-key my favorite Sunday of the year, even more than Super Bowl, because – to me, that's where you get the best football. Super Bowl is the show. And I've honestly kind of, as a diehard football fan, and this is going to sound real gatekeepish, I don't really care. I hate Super Bowl parties. I'm just going to keep it real. I hate Super Bowl parties with people who don't really watch the game. There's nothing more annoying than you sitting there, you invested in the game, and everybody there just to drink and smoke, and they don't know who the fuck is in the game. I can't stand that shit. If you asking me about what team's in there, this is not the party I want to be at. So there's so much of a, of a, you know, big scale event to it that it takes away from the actual football sometimes, in my personal opinion. We even people who don't watch football, this is the one day they're going to watch the game and they come out here with their little shitty takes. So I know it sounds like I'm a gatekeeper, but whatever. Championship Sunday is the best football of the season. And here are the final four teams that I got. In the NFC, the defending reigning Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be hosting the San Francisco Giants. San Francisco, I said Giants. San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Now, will it be Jimmy Garoppolo starting or will it be Trey Lance starting? Who fucking knows? Either way, I think that that defense and I think Kyle Shanahan will be enough to lead this team to the NFC Championship. I love Cal Shanahan. Cal Shanahan is, his play calling is a thing of beauty. Like, Cal Shanahan is who Matt Nagy thinks he is. That guy is it, just, it's like football porn watching Cal Shanahan call plays. But with that being said, he will be losing to the GOAT, to Bruce Arians in his fucking Kangos that he wears on the sideline every week. The Buccaneers will be going back to the Super Bowl in fucking L.A. to defend their championship. And in the other corner, a real heavyweight matchup here, Josh Allen and my man, Stephon Diggs, Tredavious White, that awesome defense they got in Buffalo, will be hosting the AFC championship game for like the first time in like 25 years since the Jim Kelly era. Bills Nation Bills Mafia will be on their feet. Babies will get be put through fucking tables. It's going to be an awesome environment, and they will be hosting the two-time defending AFC champion, Kansas City Chiefs. This is going to be a very, very, very tough game. But I've got the Buffalo Bills winning this game. I think Patrick Mahomes will have a great game, but I don't think it will be enough for this defense, and I think they finally will get over the hump. I'm I'm putting a lot of money on the Bills, and then Super Bowl Fifty Six, we will have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Buffalo Bills in a great, great game. And I think the Bills Super Bowl luck continues. I'm sorry, until I see this man lose consistently, I'm going to keep picking him. Thomas Edward Brady will be winning his eighth Super Bowl back to back, the first back to back. In 17 years, who's the last person to go back to back? Oh, that's right. It was him. I got to win the eighth, his eighth ring. I think a lot of people are sleeping on just how good this Tampa Bay Buccaneer team is. They're going to hit a groove. I'm telling you, Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be your Super Bowl champion back to back. Those are my NFL breakdowns, man. So that's who I got for this season, man. And I think it's going to be a fun one. I cannot wait. For this season to start, there's going to be a lot of great matchups, and I'm just ready for football. You know, last year did not feel like football up until the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl felt like football because they said, fuck COVID rules. We're just going to fill this motherfucker up with a whole bunch of fans, and it felt like football again. But there were so many matchups last year 
that it just uh there was no crowd there. The 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 the, 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 the uh digital noise, the fake fans. It just ass. Like there's a lot of stuff in just sports in general last year that just didn't feel like sports, man. If you look at it from the NBA up until maybe the second round of the playoffs when they started getting fans in the, in the, in the stadium, didn't feel like the NBA basketball. The regular season, which most NBA regular seasons are very hard to watch, it was unfucking bearable. And with the MLB last year, I can't even look at any highlights from last year's playoffs. It, it just it, it just don't feel like playoff baseball. There's one thing about October that you love is that 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 roaring crowd. You know what I'm saying? When it's a big key situation, when it's a huge home run, it feels like the ground is shaking. You hear Joe Buck calling a great home run or Ernie Johnson calling a great home run. We didn't have that last year. So we didn't have none of that last year with NFL. So I'm excited to see this, man. I'm excited for the NFL season to start. And that's why I think it's going to be happening. And we're going to keep a prediction counter this whole entire season. Each week, I'm going to be making my weekly predictions. And we're going to see how good I am on my weekly prediction. We're going to, we're going to keep a counter up here on I'm not going to hold you. So look out for that. And it may be at the end of the year. We'll see how right I am. Am I Negro Domus? I think I am Negro Domus. When I said the Bucks are going to win last year, anybody was looking at me like I was crazy. Oh, Brady's old. Da, 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 da. The man eats avocado ice cream. The man is 45 and he looks like he's 22. They've got Antonio Brown. They've got Mike Evans. They've got Chris Godwin. They got an elite fucking defense. I'm telling you, man. They get it. It's going to be a great season, man. So that's who I got. Now, we have no guests this week, so we're going to get right back into the Goofy Mog of the Week. Goofy Mog of the Week, man. There was a lot of people I could have chose from the Met situation. It's very fucking stupid on both ends. Uh, so this is kind of like a, the main Goofy Mog of the Week is not them, but I'm going to include them in there. Like, Look, man, Javi Baez, I love Javi. He's the Russell Westbrook of baseball. When Javi is on, it's electrifying. When he's off, Motherfucker, he is off. He's swinging shit so far out the fucking zone. But he took offense to Mets fans booing him and the team. And, you know, they start doing the thumbs down thing, which is pretty fucking lame. But I think both sides are stupid because if you're a player, especially in New York, if you play like shit, you're going to get booed. Now, granted, I've been to a lot of sporting events in my life. I don't think I've ever booed my team at a sporting event. Now, I booed them on my couch every fucking day. If you read my tweets, you would think I hate the, the White Sox. You would think I hate the Bears and the Bulls. That's how passionate I am about my teams. I never booed them. But I understand. If you look at how the Mets have played the last four weeks, they went from number one to their playoff chances basically being shot. So I understand that. But at the same time, you have met the Mets front office, you know, say, oh, it's inexcusable for you to be doing this to our fans. And it's a dumbass situation on both sides. And only the New York Mets can do something like that. But – my main goofy mog of the week is going to be Bishop Sycamore. Like this, this fucking situation here is maybe the wildest story I've seen in sports since Manti Teo and the fake girlfriend, which to me still is like your athlete, your Notre Dame. Do you really need to fake a girlfriend? Like, what are we, what are we fucking doing? Well, I'm not going to get into some shit for 10 years ago, but it's the wildest story from this. So for you, for those of you who are not, and tap of what's going on. These guys made a fake school and competed on ESPN against college students. Not only is this a fake school, these guys are grown ass men. Grown ass men. The, 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 the coach of this fake school has a warrant out for his arrest right now. And I got to get this to ESPN because ESPN has had a hard couple weeks with everything they've been going through, man. And this is just a cherry on top. How do you not investigate this shit? And if you go and listen to some of the audio from the announcers who are calling this, they were just as shocked. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And the fact they were able to pull this off for like three games. It's crazy. And on top of that, they got washed. They got washed by these kids. These are all motherfuckers in their 30s getting washed by kids the uniforms look terrible and the more you look at look at it you wonder how did they get away with this jug for so fucking long and it's just the more you read about that story the crazier it is so i gotta give my goofy mug of the week not to them 
but to ESPN and the guys who book these games. Like, what the fuck? It's just, at this point, I just don't understand how that got cleared. And for them to have three games to go this long, man, it's just a crazy, crazy ass story, man. So I'm going to give them the share goofy mark of the week, them and the New York Mets. Mets need to be worried about the playoffs. More need to be worried about what the fuck the fans are doing, man. It's just an overall crazy situation, man. So that is all I've got for you on this week's edition of I'm Not Going to Hold You. Oh, we'll be back next week. Um, It's going to be a fun episode next week, man. Uh, Look out for our gambling expert making his debut. My brother Flo will be making his debut on the show. We're going to 79th and Hallis Corner. So look out for that, man. We got a lot of good stuff coming. Football's coming, man. We're in the last month of baseball regular season. Pennant races are heating up. We're just 30 days away from October from the best playoffs in sports, in my personal opinion. And then next month, when the best time is to be a sports fan, baseball playoffs, NFL football, beginning of the NBA season, it doesn't get much better than that. So tune in with us next week. I'm, I'm We're going to ride through this journey, man. As usual, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barb Chess Scott. You can follow HB Media on Instagram at HB Media and on Twitter at HB Media TV. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, follow the Barber's Chat Network at Barber's Chat Net on Twitter and Instagram. And you can subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chat Network, man. Give a shout out to my super producers, Pavy, TPJ. We out. We'll holler at y'all next week. Get in paper on this player, haters, old news, money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line.